What's going on, my people? And welcome back to Israx Movie Reviews. Thanks for rocking with me. We're going to be putting a bow tightly on the series recap to Disney's Hawkeye. Uh, Hawkeye is the most unassuming of the Marvel shows on Disney Plus so far. Um, it doesn't have the media hook of Loki's uh, time bending story or even WandaVision's um, surreal take on sitcoms. Uh, it also stars arguably the most forgettable of all the Avengers. Uh, not his fault, but uh, one who's getting a big spotlight. While others are more overly characters getting their movies that are coming a little bit too late. But Jeremy Renner in the title role of this is awesome. Um, and yet there's something about his take on the character. And there's something about the way he pursues um, the nature of what is asked for him during the series. Um, this has a blend of uh, detective story meets MCU action uh, with a charming Christmas vibe that just works. Uh, the series was amazing. Uh, it only has six episodes, but across those six episodes, Hawkeye manages to balance being a superhero, a father, uh, and it balances being a superhero show that doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, with all the complex storytelling elements that come with being a part of the Marvel Universe. The fact that it pulls it off so well is something of a Christmas miracle. Um, we're gonna get into some spoiler territory. So for those who haven't seen the series, please log off and come back on another time, all right? Uh, despite the name Hawkeye, uh, is, it isn't a show about Jeremy Renner necessarily. Um, even though he's a big part of it. Um, but the story is just as much about his uh, wannabe protege, with Kate Bishop. You get introduced to her, played by Haley Steinfeld on this. Uh, the two are forced together after Kate dons the costume of a vigilante uh, known as the Ronin, uh, formerly worn by Clint. Uh, we got a glimpse of that in Endgame. And... This puts her in the crosshairs of some dangerous people. Uh, Clint just wants to be left alone, uh, to spend time with his family over the holidays, while Kate, who grew up in Manhattan, growing up idolizing Hawkeye, couldn't be more thrilled about being forced uh, to team up together. Uh, the show maintains um, many different strengths and how they play off of each other. The chemistry is up there with, you know, the best, you know, the chemistry he had with Black Widow was amazing, and he carries it over with Kate in this one. Um, Kate is exceedingly charming. Um, she's a playful mess who's young, who's constantly in over her head, and yet usually able to talk her way out of situations. Uh, Clint, in the opposite, is very sullen because he's been through a lot, uh, pessimistic, but he's prepared. It's like Batman. <laughs> uh, the story is structured a bit like a detective story, like I was saying before. Uh, at least at first, right? With the two investigating a bunch of uh, shady people connected to the Ronin. Um, and also, it's Christmas in New York. You know, that's the subplot. That's the backdrop of this uh, series, which the, the cinematography was amazing. Uh, and for it to be actually Christmas in real life uh, was a joy to see. Uh, uh, this all lends the show to a gritty yet playful uh, vibe, and it suits it well, uh, where there's gunfights that are interrupted by quips about USB standards and all kinds of other things. Uh, it doesn't take too long before the show intersects with the rest of the MCU, and it does so from a different view from many different directions. Um, one of the main connections was teased at the end of the Black Widow movie, right? We all know who Yelena is, played by Florence Pugh. I think she does an amazing job, which she vows to avenge her sister's death, right? By killing Clint. Uh, when she does show up to do just that, um, she equal parts, she's menacing but hilarious. You know, much like Black Widow. Uh, she's a trained assassin from birth who's trying to do some normal human things now that she's sort of free, right? 
Um, I like the chemistry between uh, her and Steinfeld. I think uh, both of them have incredible chemistry. Um, Haley Steinfeld seems to have great chemistry with just about everyone in the show. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun to watch them uh, talk life and death over a pot of macaroni and cheese towards the, in the last episode, uh, discussing everything from a planned uh, killing to Rudolph to superpowered reindeer. Later on, the two can't stop complimenting each other uh, in the midst of a brutal fistfight uh, with Kate yelling, stop making me like you. That, that was hilarious. Uh, you know, they managed in this series to take serious elements and mix them with a bit of humor, and I love that. Uh, I love this. While Marvel fans knew that one was coming, the bigger connection is more uh, unexpected. You know, the big bad of season one is, spoiler alert, the criminal overlord Kingpin, Carlton Fisk. And in this case, he's played by none other than Vincent D'Onofrio, who is amazing as this character. He also had the role in the Netflix Daredevil series. Uh, it's unexpected primarily because since the launch of Disney+, Plus, which was considered to be a new wave, they've been adding a lot of past characters from other shows prior to Disney acquiring the rights. Um, and the, the new wave of MCU streaming series that come with this and the mixture of the Netflix shows, um, I, you know, they show a, a diverse way of mixing the two. So uh, it's seamless. Um, so all I'm saying is the next time uh, an MCU character needs some help uh, with an investigation, Jessica Jones is right there. Right, even though we get no signs of her in this series, we don't even get a mention. But you just never know. Uh, these kinds of crossovers are common for Marvel, and for the most part, they don't feel too obtrusive here. Right, uh, nothing's as bad as Jonathan Majors' right monologue at the end of Loki. Uh, the reveal, the reveals um, hit a little bit harder if you know when what's already happening or what's already happened. You know, I would recommend at least watching Black Widow first before watching this series. But otherwise, the background knowledge isn't strictly necessary to understand that Kingpin is a mob mastermind in this. And uh, Yelena is a charming assassin who's after Hawkeye. And Hawkeye balances things nicely in this, making it work fairly well, both for the diehards and for those coming in fresh for the first time. Um... There may be a few too many threats happening concurrently. Uh, they necessarily don't take you out the loop. But towards the end, um, you see, maybe was it too much? You know, maybe you could have saved it for a second season or maybe for an upcoming movie. Um, there's an important villain reveal. The inevitable showdown between Clint and Yelena. The debut of so much team superhero costumes. A pivotal moment for... Echo, who was played by Alec Cox, awesome. A future hero who starts out as a criminal, if you're not familiar with the comics. Um, she's a deaf mute who is, is awesome. She's a weapon. Uh, Kate seemingly is sentenced to Hawkeye's level as a hero is teased throughout the series. Uh, and of course, it's a tease to what comes next, um, which in this case appears to involved Clint's wife, uh, Laura Barton. Um, surprisingly, Hawkeye uh, doesn't have the traditional MCU big reveal after the credits. Um, this was good to see. Instead, as viewers, we got to watch a full song performance from the Avengers musical that was uh, introduced to us in the first episode. Um, there's a lot going on. At the one point in the finale, there are three pivotal fights happening concurrently. And the last episode rushes through some of them without giving much time for the heavy moments to land. Um, this kind of... This kind of balancing act is, of course, the key to the whole Marvel machine. Where every story is just one cog in a much bigger machine. Uh, Hawkeye pulls it off well. As many of its contemporaries, it works as a standalone story 
um, a fun romp to Christmas here in New York, uh, while also weaving in multiple threads from various other Marvel works and stories and setting up at least two more. So uh, all that in just six episodes. And while rehabilitating Clint Barton, Hawkeye, and so here you can finally care about. Um, we definitely look forward to uh, seeing the progression of Kate. Uh, this ends with Echo pointing a gun at Kingpin. And while the scene pans out, we hear a gunshot. So we don't know what happens to Kingpin. We don't know if he shot, killed, murdered. We don't know if he managed to get the upper hand on Echo. Um, we just don't know. And I thought that was great, a great send off uh, for the first season and just to leave it like that and keep us guessing, you know. Uh, at the end of this, this episode, you see Clint uh, go back to his family and he takes Lucky the dog and he takes um, Miss Lady Hawk, uh, Kate Bishop with him. Uh, because towards the end of the episode also, her mother gets arrested for all the crimes that she committed and for the violent acts she performed for Kingpin and with Kingpin. And you're really gonna enjoy the series. They really put a bow and a cap on it and we look forward to what's going on next. Um, but till then, I'll see you in the next review. To my diehard Marvel fans, keep coming back, subscribe, please. If you like this video, hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Look forward to speaking to you.